silver boulder saved my life. Today we're recapping Battle of the Bands. We're going to recap part one. We're going to introduce our special, special guest. Um, he's going to talk some NBB stuff, and then we're going to hop to part two, and then we're going to like see what our special guest is up to now. Um, our special guest is Kelly Price, in case you Woo! didn't know. If you didn't already know. <laughs> um, or as Nick on The Cat in the Moon says, if you're hard of hearing, Kelly Price <laughs> is on the pod today on the fucking pod i thought you said on the pot and i was like wait who's no on the pot <laughs> it's saturday night and we on the pot <laughs> <Just watch. laughs> so if you don't know this yet siobhan and i are heavy youtube poop fans um nah, shut up i will not <laughs> shut up because you've instilled this love in me and i must return the favor to the audience Sometimes Siobhan and I don't speak in full sentences because we're quoting YouTube poop, but we still have an entire conversation. Okay. Um, no, we're, we're not doing this now. No, we're not doing this now. No, we got to get into the recap. Siobhan is going to be taking on part one. So Siobhan, take it away. Read us your recap. And then we'll, we got to dive in and we're going to dissect this like a frog in science Halloween. class. We're going to get up, get on top of it. We're going to feel right aloha and mahalo. mahalo. She right. <laughs> All right. So part one of Battle of the Bands, which is the proper season finale, because like we had polar bears in season two, and that was like a three-parter. Um, I mean, I don't consider No School Fool's Day to really be like a proper season finale either, because I feel like that wasn't a proper season ending, much like Victoria's. But um, this is getting into conspiracy theory territory now, but we know for a fact in my brain, my brain is facts because I'm a Sagittarius. Um, that <laughs> Battle of the Bands is the proper season finale, not Alien Clones, for season one of the Naked Brothers Band. So what happens in this episode? The band is scheduled to play a concert for the charity Little Kids Rock, alongside a punk band called the LA Surfers from the West Coast, or from Britain, led by bad boy British rock star Bobby Love. The episode opens with the band writing and practicing their new song, L.A., and the band soon learns that Rosalina is interested in Bobby Love and his lattes, if you know what I mean. Nat soon becomes jealous and suspicious of Bobby upon meeting him, learning from, an <laughs> learning from a spicy encounter in the bathroom that Bobby Love isn't exactly who he says he is. Will Rosalina believe him if he starts to tell her the truth? Will Bobby Love overthrow pretty much everything to do with the charity and the Naked Brothers Band in order to get some puss? Find out on this episode. Sips tea. It's actually Red Bull and tea. So You're disgusting. Part one and oh, our you. story begins with um, the Naked Brothers Band rehearsing um, their new song, L.A., in front of a green screen with beautiful images of L.A. In the background. In the moonlight. In the moonlight. <laughs> We'll I, ourselves. I love the song LA. I think it's it's quite a complex song and I there's just all these different parts that go together and I've always been impressed by it. Mm -hmm. It slaps. The last time that I went to LA, I listened to only that song and going to California by Led Zeppelin like for the whole fucking time. Well, you oh, gotta. My songs were you LA and uh, California by Phantom Planet because the Naked Brothers band, the OC... Yeah, and mine was, because, I mean, it's been a while since I went to L.A., but mine was L.A. and um, Hollywood by the Jonas by the Brothers. Jonas Brothers. <laughs> wrong band of brothers, but yes. Yeah, the wrong one. The incorrect one. But uh, Hollywood, no, but uh, California by Phantom Planet, it makes sense since, like, on the last Song Association video, they did do that one, and... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That was so sweet when Nat was all like, I watched it just because of her. That's a girl. Imagine breaking up with Nat Wolf and being like, we'll still always have the OC. Imagine breaking up with Nat Wolf. Imagine. Like, come Whatever. on. 
I know. Just them all day long. That's the absolute last thing I would do. Seriously. That's the actual last thing I would do as well. Also, like, continuity, guys. Continuity, guys. Continuity, guys. Um, brand new song, but it's my ass. <laughs> but it's also from the song, because, like, there's the part in the song where they, um, are in full snowsuits and they're sledding. Yes, they're in full snowsuits and they're sledding and they're sitting there, like, recording the video for the song. And then Nat's like, oh, well, we wrote the I wrote this at fucking, like, three in the morning last night and now we have to record a music video for it. Also, if you're gonna write it that morning and you don't have everyone's part for it, why are you going to make a music video for it that day? I'm almost wondering if the song was filmed after the Battle of the Bands. <laughs> I'm also right. It could have happened that way. It absolutely could have happened. Yeah. <laughs> and then they yeah. were like, oh, wait, the Battle of the Bands should be the season finale. But wait, let's make it Alien Clones. <laughs> let's make it Alien Clones. Nat, I remember, didn't you have something about this particular part? Just about Kasim laughing and Thomas laughing. Yeah, I did. Thanks for reading my mind. Oh, my God. Um, it's when when the song stops and they stop playing because seems laugh is just so genuine. It's like he's just giggling and it's like this is the greatest thing that's ever happened on the television. Yeah, we don't know how they screwed up. I just remember Thomas like like kicked his cello over essentially. Yeah, it's like the pin falls or whatever. Yeah, and then Kasim was apologizing. I'm like, what did you do? Thomas was the one who dropped his He's just his being cello. a sweetie. He needs to apologize for Thomas because Thomas is Thomas. Oh, so true. We all need to apologize for Thomas. No, oh we God. don't. <laughs> once we get once we get to part two of this episode, we're definitely going to need to apologize for Thomas for what he says. We need to apologize for a lot of people in this episode, but it's fine. We're not going to apologize for Bobby Love. We're going to let him be a manipulator, and it's going to be great. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yep. Also, I love the next the next sequence when they're in the fuzzy room, and they're signing autographs. And just, <laughs> number one, Kasim is just so distraught over the loops on the L's. And when they're like, oh, why are the LA surfers even doing this little charity gig? They're just so tough and leather jacket-ish. And Matt's like, what, do you have to be wimps to help people? And David. David's just like, yeah. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> and he right. Do you have to be a wimp to want to help people? I figure that, like, helping people isn't a wimpish type of thing, you know? Kind of. It kind of. Yeah. Okay. Also, Natalie's other note on this was the whole Thomas and David playing air hockey, but, like, were they playing, yeah. like, which or hand? Yeah, daily nitrol walk. <laughs> which one? Are we prioritizing the writing because we're lefties, or are we prioritizing the air hockey with our right hand? I need the answer. What do you think? Well, all I know for sure is that Nat Wolf is left-handed. Yes, I remember that he's left-handed because when I got that baby right there, his right hand was broke. No, wait, his it was his left hand that was broken. He broke a finger. And, and oh, that's right. Of the Nickelodeon universe with a broken hand. That's right. Yes. Was that the same day that he um that he was like talking to Miranda on that ride? There's all those pictures. Yeah. She was there the, the same day. She was there. Uh, she did like a signing like an hour or two before him. We were standing in, standing in line and we cut in line and I'm glad we cut in line. Shout out to Jean Fiddler for cutting Shout in line for Jean us. Jean Fiddler for being like, fuck everyone here. My daughters need to meet their idols. My daughters need some serotonin. Well, I mean, especially like after all of these years and like what we're doing with our lives currently, it's pretty evident that your mom needed to cut in line. Pretty evident. Oh, if she didn't. If she did, because, like, the thing is, we found out about that day. I'll never forget when I found out. <clears throat> we found out right before we went to bed. Because we knew that Nickelodeon Universe was opening, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if they're going to do anything cool. You know, in my little heart, deep down, I was like, oh, man, what if Nat and Alex and the Naked Brothers were going to be there? And then my mom came downstairs to tell me, Siobhan, do you know who's going to be there tomorrow? And I'm like, what? And she said, Nat and Alex! Oh my god. And I think I blacked out of joy. <laughs> I would shit myself. I couldn't see it. I remember the next day, like, when we confirmed that we were gonna go, I had, like, a zit, and I tried to pop my zit, and my face got all red, and I was like, I'm 11, so shut the fuck up. Oh You're god. like, no, Alex is gonna see my zit. No one can see my zits, and now I have <laughs> adult cystic acne. Yeah. So, here it is. 
So oh my God. anyway, like, um, yeah, so they're playing air hockey. Please feed Rosalina's thirst because she's got Bobby Love as her screensaver with hearts around it. She do. Okay, but her like denying that she has a crush on Bobby Love and just being like, I just respect him as a musician. That's okay, like, that's, that's like me pretending that I don't still have a baby crush on Alex Wolf. I just respect him as a musician. It's fine. Baby crush? I'm a lesbian. I just respect him as a musician. <laughs> Highlights? Baby crush? Do you also dig his curly hair? Admit I, I dig his curly hair. I dig his curly hair. She likes your butt and fancy hair. I know. I know. I, I read her diary. You think fancy? I love that movie so much. Bobby loves okay, his screensaver. Like, I love how he's it's like, not. yeah, see, she, she just respects him as a musician. And then he says, I don't know if this was like, like when, um, uh, Lindsay Lohan says gruel in Mean Girls, but he says, a musician of what? He says, a musician of what? And then she's like, why, why what? <laughs> it's just like, what the Why fuck? do you respect him as a musician? Because like, why do you guys look at my screensaver screen anyway? anyway? Why were they looking at her screensaver? Boys are so gross. <laughs> and then of course they're all like, <laughs> Thomas and his Binky Barnes energy and his two little minions that share a brain with him. They share one brain cell. <laughs> like you guys share one brain it's like you guys share one brain um so yeah pretty much end scene they're just signing autographs and like yeah. end scene they're signing autographs next scene is they're sitting there nat and alex on the computer <laughs> nat is hate following bobby love on the internet <laughs> he's hate following bobby love's website and then bobby's just sitting there in a video he's like thank you for being a fan i'm bobby I'm so doomed when <laughs> Rosalina sees him at that charity gig. She's never going to look at me again. And he's like, look at this picture. He's surfing. He's riding a motorcycle and drinking a lot. <laughs> I <laughs> love that so much. Because it's like, it's never addressed that. That's fake, dude. It's just like the next that's scene. It's like, real. he shows up with a latte. And that's the last we hear about the fucking picture. <laughs> and you can't even read in the car. In the car. Me fucking neither. I have the worst motion sickness ever. Same, dude. Now like can't read in the car at all. I still wear C bands at age twenty. What up, I'm Jared? Four. I'm nineteen. I can't fucking read in the car. I can't fucking read. So yeah. So um, Nat's all like shit. If what you do can't do? beat him, join him or whatever. And right. I love how Alex is like the first. The first instinct is don't be yourself, Nat. You should fake an English accent. And then Nat's like, it worked out so well the last time. The fucking <laughs> kind of did. Never denied. Kind of did. Kind of did it. Because like, because Rosalina, for some reason, when she was nine, really fucking believed that Nat had another girlfriend named Rosalina in England. Because that's just what that happens every day. Because that happens. I mean, we all believe that the Naked Brothers Band all played their own instruments, so... Take it that back. <laughs> Take that fucking back right now, Mary. I swear to God. <laughs> Just saying, never deny the charms of an Englishman. Pip, pip, old chap. I'll die. Okay, but like, the next scene, when he's riding a fucking... Is it like a dirt bike that he's riding down the street? Of it's New like York? a little dirt bike, yeah. Yeah. And then Rosalina's got her, like pink and purple bike and it's just so cute i love the pink and purple streamers bike. and then nat comes literally screaming down the sidewalk <laughs> help me help me i can't tell if that's like a genuine cry for help or he's just like trying to be badass i think it's a little of both i think it's just a little bit of both i think it's a little bit of both too it's just fucking weird and i love Hello, it love top of the morning when he gets off his fucking bike oh my god this is a latte and i like it a latte i love how it's just like yeah i just woke up this morning and my hair was like this hello orange like wh what Talk about that was me night. in beauty school though <laughs> wait is it is morning, it morning? Is it morning? <laughs> yeah it's morning and, like, we haven't even met Bobby Love yet, and he's already doing, like, a great Bobby Love impression. It's just like, what the fuck is we this? We just right? know. It's just a little Bobby Love. And, um, and she's like, the whole, oh, <laughs> this is no act, Rosalina. This is the real me. Live in La Vida Loca. La Vida Loca! La Loca! And then he... When he smacks her ass. Smack that, smack that he ass like the drum. He apologizes 
Did I uh, hurt he you? Wet her ass. Apologizes. <laughs> oh my god. That I have so many thoughts respects about women. Because yeah. the I'm word. sorry. Did I hurt you? He's so scared to say like anything romantic to her ever or flirt with her like ever. He fucking writes songs about her and he's like, I, th I'm in love with the girl. Oh, I hope she doesn't find out I have a crush on her. And he does all these like backwards ass things, writes beautiful eyes about her. And then she sees the tape about it. And then like, he's bold enough to smack her ass when he's in a costume. And then he's like, I'm sorry, did I hurt you? He only has the confidence that will- he only has the confidence when he's in costumes. This is a nod back to the Wolf Brothers Cry Wolf thing with the all hail the Arabian princess. He can never be himself around her. Men, all men do is lie. See, this is perfect. Eat hot all shit Nat and do, lie. All Nat do is ride dirt bike and drink latte. And lie. And lie. Hot bean water and lie. <laughs> and so Rosalina's all like, am I being punked right now? And then he's like, no. I'm hey, bad. to the bone. I'm bad. I'm, I'm whining and I'm really bad. Nat Wolf, you are so not bad Ooh. to the bone. I can't believe it. You actually punked me. <laughs> Good job. Good job. And then she goes Good inside boy. and Nat's all like, this stuff is terrible. Eh. I expected, I expected lattes to suck when I was a kid. Like, and then I got started drinking lattes and I'm like, this is good. Mm -hmm. This is the precursor to becoming an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lattes slap. They do. I just love espresso. That shit is hidden. So yeah, uh, meanwhile, inside of the studio or wherever we're meeting up for this photo shoot for the charity gig. Nat has the fucking audacity to just like get his hair wet before the photo shoot and show up with wet, soggy kind of orange hair. Like this is his plan. Now get your boots and your coat for this wet ass hair. Ew. <laughs> Okay, but like when Alex is trying to get it out, lotion. He puts lotion on his it's hair. It's like conditioner or some shit. And he uses the whole and fucking bottle. And he's like, a toilet brush? He just to put a toilet brush in his hair. Like, does he? Does Alex know how to wash hair? I, clearly not. I, I like, I don't. Do you need help, dude? Like, I can give you like a, a TikTok I mean, tutorial. curls are a lot to maintain. Do you think he was maintaining his own curls yeah. at the tender age of like, eight perhaps i don't know either mm. I, I truly don't but it's it's so fucking funny how he's trying to get it out of there and he's like oh you know so bobby love won't steal my girlfriend and then alex i hate not this part your girlfriend why this this part just like makes me so crusty on the inside because like crusty on the inside huh alex has the grounding to know that rosalina and nat are not dating and yet continues to insist that Jesse and Juanita are both his girlfriends. Like, are you that fucking Just dense? a reminder that you and Rosalina are not dating. Also, I have seven girlfriends. Who, one of them's a lesbian and one of them is 10 years older than me. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Anyway. I'm just her beard. It's fine. So as they're so unsuccessfully getting um, Nat's orange hair out, uh, they hear someone coming, and then <laughs> Alex, what's the point? We're already on camera. <laughs> but um, Nat's still like, we gotta hide, and so he drags Alex into the stall. Ciao, baby. Bobby and here he Bobby. comes, In the man. Walks, the man, the myth, the legend, the icon. Bobby Love. <gasps> Please, Bobby, baby. Bobby Love loves you. So he's talking on the phone to his- And then he immediately um, breaks the accent. I love how he right. just immediately breaks it. Dude, yeah, this bogus little kid's charity gig is gonna get the band a buttload of press. So fucking funny. You write me another hit. Another, another baddie love. love original. He doesn't write his own songs. I'm 11. I'm 11, so shut the fuck up. Heard this kid Nat Wolf written like 22 new songs. He's like nine or 10 years old. I'm Actually, I'm 11, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> Nat and Alex just look so little in this scene. They're just, like, clutching each other while sitting on the toilet in this stall. Hey, but Moon! <laughs> and they're that just, has been like... me and Siobhan so many times. <laughs> How many times have we, like, hidden in a bathroom, though, Nat? Just for the fuck of it. Too many. Too many times. It's the zygote theory all over again. It is. It's, it's coming. 
So yeah, um, Bobby is obviously not English because he breaks the accent immediately. He doesn't write his own songs and yeah. It's so he doesn't deep. like little kids rock as much as he lets on, that's for sure. Oh, and he makes it very clear he's going to hit on Rosalina. I think I'll hit on her too. And it's just, it's, whoa, there's like orange water in here. This place is nasty, man. There's like pork orange butter. Pork, I love pork. And I love pork. fucking pork. pork in walks walk pork. In. And he's got to take a fat piss because he drank a lot of punch apparently. So he starts banging on the stall door <laughs> where Nat and I Alex are. I have to piss. Like, that's going to help. So fucking funny. At one point, he just bangs on the door. He's like, pee. <laughs> Why didn't he song fire, of course, man? Of course, Bobby panics and he's like, Pork, is someone in there? And then he's like, We gotta go. And then Pork's like, I have to pee, man. And he goes, Pee in the ladies' room. Use the ladies' room. <laughs> and that's it. That's it. And then Matt's all like, That was shocking. And then we cut to uh, some footage of Thomas with a recorder and we say, Why? <laughs> and everything else that Thomas Betuello does. <laughs> Why? Why? Let, me just, let me just take this moment to apologize for Thomas for the first time in this episode for his recorder playing. There's a lot of things we need to apologize for. Tom. Wait, didn't Binky Barnes play the clarinet? Wait! <laughs> oh my fucking god! <laughs> the internet! Uh, the thing. Hold on, wait. Binky Barnes. Binky Barnes instrument <laughs> search. Binky is the only Lakewood student to be accepted into the Young Persons Orchestra, and the judges promised to lend him a proper clarinet from Arthur Wiki Fandom. I run the Binky Arthur Barnes Wiki listens Fandom. to Sicko Mode. Oh, okay. <laughs> what the? I want to can all stars. They're this really cool band. I met the composer, and they've agreed to come to our school next week. Better than any of you. I'll stop now. Binky Barnes plays the clarinet. So yeah, here's so here's Thomas and his Binky Barnes energy playing the recorder, and then here's um oh in here's Miss Scoggins for the first time in the series. The best oh, character. Oh god, for Miss Scoggins. Oh my god, I love. Okay, she's whoever they got to play. Whoever that actress is, she's fucking fantastic. I need to find out what that girl's name is. Yeah, we need to know. Her. Yeah, Miss Goggins is an iconic character. Fantastic in every single way. We love a businesswoman. We do. Oh, so Bobby's all like, the kids, they're off the Emily- future. And Rosalina's all like, oh, well, I'm simping. And then Nat, in walks it's Nat, and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and, uh, da, 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 da. and Rosalina's all like, he's been saying the most amazing things. And yeah, I bet he has. You should have heard the amazing things he said in the bathroom. In the bathroom. Oh. Oh. Mm, interesting. Oh. So yeah. I um, just think yeah. this scene is honestly so telling about what it means to be an artist and what it means to just like be a musician and um, that like people can make really good art and, you know, be really touching in the, you know, media that they create and then also just be a shit human being. Right. Like- your art and your personality and your like morals do not have to align for you to make art that's like aesthetically pleasing and it's always a jarring thing when you find someone like that in the wild yeah, it's true that's real shit. Mm-hmm. that's real shit. all men do it lie yeah. Yeah. so um in walks bobby and he's all like hello gorgeous rosalina Durr. And we all melt. But Nat is not having it today. Nat is not having any of it. He oh. immediately just starts making himself look like an idiot. Oh my god, it's just... Okay. So, Bobby, your accent, it's really interesting. What part of England are you from? And then he's just, like, pushing... And then he's just pushing Nat out of the way. And he's calling him mate. And then he's calling him mate. And then... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we totally glossed over the line where fucking Bobby's like wants to play the trumpet or the bass or the radio. Pork or the radio. <laughs> yeah. And just when they're fucking trying to take pictures and Nat is just like Yeah, with his wet hair. He has like this um what's the what are those hats called? White cap on. Yeah. Cap. Yeah. 
Yeah, w- over his wet ass hair. <laughs> and then Bobby's like, "Do you mind if I take your lady on a ride on my motorbike?" Yeah, I mind. <laughs> yeah, I mind. I'm not. I his love lady, how he just. And like, I'd love to take a ride with you. You can't just do that, Nat. Getting territorial, territorial rodeo Disney what over someone who's not actually your GF. Come on. Oh wait, we glossed over the whole C seven thing. Yeah, which trust me, I'm waiting. I'm sitting on my hands over here, so I have. I'm gonna wait. Okay, so let's talk about when Bobby brings Rosalina over. Here's how he fucking smoozes her in. So, Rosalina on banana smoothie. Is that a C seven you're playing? Yeah, it is a C7. Cheeky. Really? I hardly think a C7 is cheeky. I mean, like, maybe a D flat. Maybe a D flat. So, here's the thing. We here's have debated the... this for years. Me and no, me. we have debated no such thing because there's a right answer and I know it, okay? I would know because I studied music theory in college for four fucking years and this is like what I have a degree in. Here we so, go. So, banana smoothie is a C7. To an F, or like an F7 if you want. Same kind of thing. Cut up the bananas, put it in the middle, and shake it all up. Shake it all up. So here's the thing in order to go from just a normal C major chord to a seven, you add the B flat. Add your seven. Okay? But in this case, the B flat is our melody. Cut up the bananas, put it in the middle, and shake it all up. Shake it all up. If we're believing it in like the canonical sense that Nat wrote the song and then brought it to the band, he wrote the B flat and she didn't. So if she <laughs> if she's playing like a single note, which is what she usually does in these like videos, if she's just playing a B flat on the bottom, our chord is gonna sound kind of muddy and weird. But also if she's playing a chord on the bass, a C7 chord, that would also sound muddy and weird. So Rosalina didn't even write the C7, that was Nat. So just like, don't give her the credit. And the other thing is that this is what it sounded like if there was a D flat. Here's our D flat. Go. Much more cheeky. We're, we're, we're using, we're dropping a flat six in our fucking. <laughs> <laughs> dropping a flat. Imagine if you had to go to the toilet. You're not dropping a deuce. You're dropping a flat. Six. That's what I do every time. Yeah. Ignore this part because I don't poop because I'm a girl. But if I did poop, it would be a flat seven. So I, D flat would have sounded know. cool. No, Rosalina can't take credit for the C seven. Lena can't poop. Either. And girls don't poop. All right, um, I've got a couple a couple little touch points to get us back into the groove. Go. The first one is when Miss Goggins is announcing some shit about the charity, and she goes, "Do you need me to say that in any other languages?" Just like flex. Do you? Because like I could. And then also the fact that <laughs> Nat just has one singular orange rat tail through this whole scene. It's just like one orange piece in the back. I love it. I didn't even think of like removing it at all. Iconic. We, we gotta keep it. It's part of the look. Mm-hmm. Part of the newsboy look, you know? Yes. I mean, Kelly did mention that he kept the orange extensions in a box. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, we'll take it. We will take it. I think... <laughs> I, I, it's really kind of emotional, though, like, the next sequence when he's, like, watching her get on the bike. And he's like, she's falling for him. It's really kind of sad. I remember thinking hmm. how sad it was when I was a kid. Yeah, because they're like looking, they're like in a dark hallway, looking out the window, looking all forlorn. And here mm-hmm. is, she even like nods to the window. Like she like looks over her shoulder and is like, <laughs> they're like what a and biatch. Bobby, and he's he just the there. He says the iconic quote here. Jealousy is a destructive emotion, Rosalina. Have you ever noticed that the word lousy is in the word jealousy? That's because jealousy makes you feel lousy. Makes you feel lousy. And so Rosalina's all like, wow, you're like so deep and stuff. And then they like yeah. ride away. And then Nat's all like, what the fuck? Also, let's just talk about how like Bobby totally and entirely knows that his name is Nat Wolf. 
And we know this because he talks about Nat Wolf in the bathroom scene before he knows that Nat was spying on him. And then he kicks in with the Nate shit because he's just trying to be a cock. Right. His name is not Nate. He said mate. He's just he's just being an ass at this point. Yeah. Settle down there, Nate. I'm not your mate. He said Nate. He said Nate. So um, that's the T. And then uh, what's next? Then they go. They're they're back at the Wolf apartment doing something, and Jesse comes over and spills the Bobby Love tea. Oh yeah. Bimbo University finally kicks Bimbo in. Bimbo University kicks in. I love when Kasim is like, girls always fall for the phonies. It's a proven scientific fact because he's not wrong. He's, he's not exactly wrong. Right. That's chapter one of Kasim's book of love. Yeah, someone write it down. Send it to the, the printing press right now. Got it. On it. But so this is where we learn about R-O-B-E-R-T, Robert. No, this is not where we learn about that. That's where we learn what his name is. That was the that was the last fact that she spelled. But first, she was all like, "The balloons." Oh, and that what he else? stamps his autographs. Yeah. And then Kasim is like, "I now know peace, because I knew it because the loops and the L's." So we get some so loopy. And uh, yeah, he's afraid of balloons, the loops and the L's, and his real name isn't Bobby. What is it? It's Robert. And they're like, oh, checks out. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, valid. So then, um, oh, is this the part where then Nat's, like, following Rosalina, and he's all like, like, can you believe it? Yeah, he tries to spill the tea to Rosie, and she's carrying around, like, that plastic binder that, like, snaps shut. I had that exact same one as a kid, and I used to journal you in did. it all the time. I I you put your MVB sheet one. music in there? I did. I mean, if I had sheet music for NBB, I would put it there. And then Rosalina was all like, he's legit. And like, I really like him. And then that's all like, shit. And so you know what Nat does because he's emo? He just goes and sits at the piano (laughs) and sings his heart out, which is like the best part of the entire series. This is just like the most relatable thing for me. That's, that's it. And then Alex is watching from the top of the spiral staircase yeah. until he hears the accordion in the distance and he looks over and hears Sonny in the fuzzy room playing the accordion to a picture of Betty. <laughs> That's also relatable. <laughs> what in the poo-poo sauce? Oh my god, I fucking love when he says that. And then I, every time he says just, Alex opens his mouth, just, I laugh. Mm-hmm. When he goes over there too, he's like, oh, I'm gonna go serenade Betty. One of my favorite Alex lines ever. Well, make sure it's a non-alcoholic serenade. She's crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Serenade is not a beverage. <laughs> and women like this serenade stuff? See this face? This, this is, is my, my thinking face. Idea face. Yeah, I have an idea face. This is my pooping face. <laughs> and so Alex is like, we're going to limonade her. And he... <laughs> <laughs> trust me for once in my eight years on this in my <laughs> eight years like that's just me like would you guys just trust me like once okay but One that's time. just what like, we used to do when we were younger i remember like when we were like way way younger you used to be like yeah i'm eight years old but i'm smarter than her <laughs> look <laughs> <sighs> so yeah you were so when you were younger nat <laughs> yeah siobhan it was kind of like me and Siobhan had the Wolf Brothers we identified with, and then we hit like 20, and it went boop, and it just swapped. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Just kidding. Never mind. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't think that's Jesse. I don't think that's Jesse. And then they're telling her, you know, like, we're going to come help you record this song, Girl of My Dreams, so you can go sing it to Rosalina under her window in the moonlight. <laughs> in the moonlight. Fuck up, David. I cannot fucking I cannot stand because I love the way Mr. Wolf, he's like, go sing it to her on a moonlit night. And so, of course, David had to chime in and be all like, in, in the, the moonlight. moonlight. <laughs> and like, Kasim knows. He's like, we're here to help you. Women love this stuff. It's like, Kasim, Kasim knows. knows. You know it. And so, this is yeah. also just like low-key foreshadowing for the fact that Rosalina is 
the most disposable member in the band throughout the series how like when she leaves it's like we just have another bass player on the block you know very weird subtextual thing I think. Mm-hmm. it's like here is what like we actually see rosalina is one of the more talked about characters in the show like she is one of the more valued ones ones who gets more lines and more subplots even though they all involve nad and then here's what's actually conveyed by the text when rosalina exits the picture several times mm-hmm. it's very weird and i'm not really i guess that's kind of why i'm like not a big fan of like the writing of rosalina it's just like she deserved better mm-hmm. very cool well, yeah. like especially if she's as musically talented as they canonically state she is she would be a much more valuable asset to the band than she seems to be yeah and they make her just a, another guitar player in season three when christina comes in and it's just like they pretty much just proved that she's disposable it was pretty mm-hmm. clear they were like the naked brothers band very much believe in uh, bros before hoes so unfortunately We'll get to that in fucking part two, dude. We'll get to that in part two. We really, we really will be doing that, though. Unfortunately. So yeah, they um they record the parts, I guess, and then here's Nat walk in with a boombox with Alex, and he's all like, "We're gonna do this. This is a great idea. Like, I'm stoked. I'm gonna like I'm gonna sweep her off her feet. It's gonna be mad great. Anyway, and then um and then here's Bobby Love coming to Rosalina's door. And he's all like, you left my, you left your earrings at my house last night. She did what? No, what is it actually that he says? It's the earring. It's, the act- it's not like at my house, but he he brought her her earring. Okay. I, yeah, I was she, like lost her yeah. earring or like something. I don't know. And then he was Cause, like, oh, well, like at the, in the next scene when they're like at the press junket for the like little kids rock charity thing. Um. She, they talk about like, oh, I'm so glad that you brought my earrings so I can have the matching set or whatever, like something like that. This reminds me of the scene in the click right before they run, right as they like run out. Um, when she's like, stop, I lost an earring. I can't go without one earring. I'll look like Johnny Depp. <laughs> and guess who's in that same sequence? Everybody fan out. Everybody fan out. It's Kelly Price. <laughs> <laughs> I just, oh god, that movie. You I can need- look, but don't touch. I love that movie. I would die for that movie. My name's Claire. Something. How did I end up here? One of the cool kids this year. Someone went shopping at Nurse Strums. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, when was the last time you watched The Click? It's been a couple years. I think I watched it in college. Well, it's on Netflix, so you should go watch it. Yeah, maybe really maybe I'll watch make it. my girlfriend watch it and she'll just cry through the whole thing. Because it's too feminine or whatever. No, because she'll be bored. If someone's, like, not getting stabbed on the screen, Lee's bored. Soft. <laughs> I mean, Massey was getting stabbed in the heart, so. Honestly, yeah, I'll sell. that's the selling point for me. Nothing touches these lips but Mac and Chris Avery. <laughs> me <laughs> so yeah nat shows up at rosalina's house and bobby's there and he's distraught and alex is like let's go home bro so they're defeated Here's they're Martin. walking home whatever um it was the next scene the press junket there's the part where um matt pinfield is talking shit about nat and how he doesn't write his own oh. songs and like watching matt pinfield sonny just jumps in front of the tv with the- <laughs> with the accordion ha ha and they're like dad get the fuck out of the way <laughs> gene and nat and siobhan energy yeah because like that like playing guitar and singing in my room was the only thing i did when my parents got divorced and so like siobhan and my mom would try to do anything and i'd be like jumping in front of the screen with the guitar and like here's another good charlotte cover guys like Keep your hands off my girl. Keep your hands off my girl. Literally. Like, <laughs> but yeah, if someone were to like start a rumor that I don't write my own songs, I would go ballistic. Same. <laughs> I'd be like, y'all. Y'all. Oh, y'all. That's all I have to say. <laughs> y'all. So yeah, they're all like, so yeah, Matt's, you know, roasting Nat as per the usual. And he's all like, he doesn't write his own songs. Like, <laughs> you're going down, Naked Brothers Band. And then we get to the press junket thing. 
Yeah. We get to the fucking press junket. And <laughs> I love how <laughs> just Alex immediately, when they're like, yeah, we're going to play with the LA surfers. And Alex is like, East Coast versus West Coast. Yeah. It's not a competition. It's a fundraiser. <laughs> it's a fundraiser. <laughs> Poor Miss Scott. Rub my face, you little weasel. <laughs> also, okay. Bobby and his fucking fucking attitude towards Nat. Yeah, but who will believe you, dude? You already lost all your street cred after Matt Pinfield's latest report. What, he, what does he say? He says some French shit and he's like, that's French. I'm not French, but I'm not British either. <laughs> like, <laughs> but you already know that, don't you, you little spy? <laughs> And anyway, so um Where's the West Coast? And Pork comes out with his pants off. <laughs> I like where was the spin-off show on just pork? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Poor little Miscoggin, she turns, sees the underwear. Ah! My mother told me not to talk to strangers in their underwear. And then here's Bobby walking by. Pork, wear your trousers. Yeah. And so I I just love that, like, the fight starts with, like, Nat and Bobby are, like, talking shit, and then Alex comes in, and he, like, punches Bobby in the crotch, and then L.A. starts playing, and it's like, sunshine! <laughs> I'll show you little kid who rocks and socks! Sunshine! <laughs> it's like Happiness the new one in the Scooby Car City. Crash. Punches you come to Crash my charity and tell lies about me. It's Nat, so funny because you're he's... embarrassing all of us. He's not embarrassing nobody because Bobby calls him mate. He says, I'm not your mate. And then Alex mishears it and says his name is not Nate and fucking stomps on his foot. <laughs> and so oh my food God. fight ensues. And then um Nats grabs the mic and he's like, let's not take this out on each other. Let's take this out on the stage. A slice of salami on the front of his head. Which helps the only suffers to a battle of the pants. Let's not take this out on each other after they take it out on each other. Right. And then after he donates all started. the profits and their savings to the charity. Which is like good. In a Which way. Like, cool. In a way, Nat. In, in a, a way. way. Um, so yeah, and then Miss Goggins is all like, on the other hand, woohoo! <laughs> Competition is a fundraiser. And Beat then this is where West Coast. our episodes split. Oh, is this the, oh, yeah. Wait, this yep. is the split. Let's, let's not forget, <laughs> let's not forget when fucking Miss Goggins says, don't you touch this important man to Nat about Bobby. And let's also not forget when fucking Alex bites her on the arm and says, sorry, just doing a taste test. Like, why did he bite Miss Goggins? <laughs> because <laughs> he has to assert his dominance. Yes. Don't you, don't you touch this important man. And okay. now for our special guest, Kelly Price. <laughs> Chris's girlfriend, Fawn. <laughs> Come up here, Chris's girlfriend, Fawn. Girl, and girlfriend. welcome to the Q and A section of the Unclothed oh, cool. Sisters podcast with our very first guest, actor, musician, icon, Kelly Price. Yes, <laughs> thank you guys. That was a that was a great introduction. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so you are a busy human. It looks like from doing the the minimal research I have done about you on the internet. You are an actor, you're a director, a film producer, a singer, songwriter, a guitar player. It looks like you've also dabbled in like modeling and all this kind of stuff too. So you've got just a ton of stuff under your belt. Um, so we're gonna start off just by asking you some introductory questions about like NBB stuff and how you sort of came into the realm of the Naked Brothers Band. Um, our first question being, how did you get this role when you were younger? Um, what were they looking for? What was the audition process like? Anything that comes to mind with those questions? Yeah, so what I remember from that is the audition came in through my manager. I went to meet uh, Polly Draper, Michael, her husband, um, and I, I think I had an acoustic guitar the first time and I played 
uh, some songs for them. And then they said, do you by any chance have an electric guitar? I said, yeah. I think I happened to have one in the car or something. I ran down and got it. And I started playing like more rocky stuff. But I took a real rock song and I still, I stripped it down and it was just me and the guitar, but it was electric and it was more Bobby Love style. And after that, they kind of just looked at each other and that was it. I think it was the same day that I got the call that, that I got the role. Wow. Wowza. Do you remember what song it was that you played? Yeah, it was Kryptonite by uh, Three Doors Down. <laughs> oh my goodness. Amazing. We love that. I love that. I mean, I'm imagining him singing it in an English accent, but I know that's not what happened. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. I, I remember singing it in an American accent. But they, I think she said for some part of it, like, can you try it in an English accent? And I think I, I vaguely remember that. I could be wrong, but you might not be off. That's hilarious. Um, any other things you remember about, like, what they were looking for, maybe, in, your, in, like, the character when they were, like, trying to cast it? I could probably find the character description somewhere in my emails. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you guys if I find it. I would lose my mind. <laughs> deep, in the, deep in the Kelly's emails archive right. oh, in oh, 2007. Right. I, I don't even know if I have the same email. I think my email was like a music boy at that time or surfers. <laughs> we all had emails like that when we were younger, though. They were also things were just ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Of course. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, your question was again? Um, just, like, uh, what they were looking for. What they were looking or if for. you remember anything like that. Yeah, um, it definitely said something like a Billy Joe Armstrong. And oh I love Green Day, but I really didn't, I had no idea that he, his name was the lead, like I, I didn't put two and two together, but I loved <laughs> oh. Green Day. But I loved Green Day. Uh, yeah. But I went in and um, I think David Bowie was a reference. Oh, but, with the hair especially. Because yeah. the Sex Pistols, David Bowie, and Billy Joe Armstrong became like <laughs> what the role was. Uh -huh. I'm, not, I'm not sure if that was in the description or if that's what was created. But I remember Billy Joe. That, that was in there for sure. That was in there for sure. And, uh, and the, the orange hair and that stuff, I, I think that was all Polly Draper. I, I still have the orange hair. I you do not. I put oh in this, like, this box that was in my closet, <laughs> and I asked my mom, uh, I asked my mom recently if she knew where the box was, and she, could, <laughs> she wasn't really good about locating it, but I'm hoping that we locate it at some point, because I got both orange strips are still in that box. Oh, I, saved my God. It. I was really sentimental as a kid, like, I saved all kinds of stuff, like, I still do. But I, I, I took, like, grass from Shea Stadium when the Mets uh, were in the World Series, and it's still in that box, too. So the grass and the hair are together, and hopefully it's not, like, corroded or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> As a hairdresser, that, like, that sets off alarm bells in my brain of, like, saving your extensions and whatnot. <laughs> right, right, right. I bet. I bet. Of, like, clients coming in after quarantine with their extensions that they ripped out, like, Ciao, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Ciao, baby. Love it. Yes. We love loves you. I love it. Oh my God. <laughs> so my question, oh my God. Uh, kind of going off of what Nat just said. Um, sorry, I call my sister. I've always called my sister Nat. And it's Sean and I. Yeah. I was definitely. I, I was like, what? <laughs> no, my sister Natalie. I've okay. I'm just this one Natalie, here. Natalie. <laughs> Um, so, parroting off of what Natalie said, my question, because I, like, I love punk rock, so, like, these are things that I noticed kind of as I grew up listening to that music, and, like, kind of, you know, seeing those inspirations, like, oh, that's, you know, the orange mullet is, you know, very Ziggy Stardust. It's, like, my question is, how much of this character was, like, written versus how much of it did you put yourself into? Because, like, after talking to Cassie Middleton a little bit, it seems like you guys as characters and as cast members we're kind of allowed to put your footing into it a little bit. So I'm wondering, was this all Polly's creation? Did you have anything you put into it at all? Yeah, I mean, I definitely put into it. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. I think 
everyone, everybody on the show did that. And that was like just one of Polly Draper's things that she allowed us to do. But also, she also had her stamp on it too. Um, it was a mix of the two, uh, but something stands out. Uh, I wrote those two songs. They weren't, they weren't in the show originally. It was when I was doing like the foot song and the hair song, I think. <laughs> Iconic. And like, bluesy rhythm, yeah. Th those were, compl I just, she just said, start playing something. I started playing that and I made <laughs> work and whatever. <laughs> that wasn't there before. <laughs> Why didn't you release those two original songs on Spotify? They would have been huge hits. Yeah, maybe. You know what? I can still do it. So you wrote the lyrics to the hair song and the feet song. And the feet song. No <laughs> way! Because those lyrics made it into the physical, like they have a scholastic book novel of the Battle of the Bands episode, and those lyrics were listed in the book. No so you wrote those lyrics. That's crazy. That's so cool. I didn't know that. Uh, a pu published scholastic book author now. There you are. <laughs> yeah. Add it to the resume. You didn't even know. And the lyrics were really intense too. I mean, they were they were tough lyrics to come up with. I mean, it was like, I love my feet. Yeah. I love my hair. I mean, that's that's not easy stuff. That's You were ahead of your time. Um, yeah. Period. Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, um, moving along, I guess. Um, so my question is, what do you remember the most about shooting? Do you have any favorite memories that stick out to you? Uh, I remember they had a, um, a small, like, Nerf basketball hoop, and all of us were just, like, playing basketball when they called cut. That I love, because I grew up playing basketball. So that's, that's, like, a memory for me. And, I mean, we were all, like, I grew up with, like, five or six little cousins and that's what it felt like when I was on the Naked Brothers band that I was just like hanging with my cousins playing Nerf basketball hanging out we all got along great um that food scene where they're throwing everything on I mean that that was I watched it uh again recently and and uh the expressions were real I mean that shit was the salami and the, all the shit <laughs> The cake, it was, it was, and I mean, they did not give up. It was, uh, it was <laughs> the, the NBB did not give up on that. They, <laughs> they were just like, assault the LA server. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, though. That is wild. I, I, that's, that scene is so ridiculous. <laughs> Typical NBB chaos montage scene, as always. Chaos right. montage. And the only two people who are trying to stop it in the room are the girls, or Allie and Miss Scott. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> no, nah, I'd be in the food fight. I'd, I'd be in that shit. Oh, yeah. Hey, love a good food fight. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Do you have any other memories, or are you ready to move on to some goofier questions? <laughs> uh, well, my cousin was actually the bass player in the band. My actual oh. cousin was in the but, LA Surfers. Oh. oh character was I, that? Uh, he, he, he was the one that made out with the girl when I played the feet song. Oh. No way! Yeah. <laughs> and it was like his first kiss, and we all made like, oh. a bit. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did he know that girl huh did he know that girl no i think they had just met like five minutes before he's like hey how you doing she's like hey and then they just start making out oh my god oh my god <laughs> that's yeah. everything it was it was pretty cool <laughs> that is wild Imagine how iconic <laughs> iconic for to sure. be the guy that made out with a girl he didn't know during the feet song like that's your <laughs> that's your claim to fame <laughs> Oh, yeah, the feet song. I mean, that, I think that's like, we'll never forget that. That's in the cousin's book for life. Does we, he still we, act? Where is he now? No, he doesn't no? act. He doesn't act. Um, I think he wanted to at, at one point. But the reason why he was, he, he was in it is because when I auditioned originally, I auditioned by myself, and then they asked me if I had a real band, and I did. I had a real band at the time called Chicken Fried Steak. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. A little embarrassing. But uh, that was my high school embarrassing band name, Chicken Fried Steak. And it consisted of me, my little brother, 
my cousin Ty and a drummer named Mike Giordano. And uh, we went in, my brother and I look identical. So they, there were no like actual brothers in the LA surfers. So that's why they had to go with, you know, someone else. But, but that was, uh, that was so, the, the whole audition process was like crazy because I went in by myself and then I brought my real band in. And then, uh, you know, I'm on set and I get to see my actual LA surfer members and like pork walks in with the dreads. I'm like, <laughs> holy shit, this is like an actual like sex pistol type. Uh -huh. Diva here. <laughs> that I better character is so funny. We yeah. loved pork. Oh, pork's awesome. Pork, pork is great. I we, if... Pork had a lot of, of those like improv moments that were hilarious. And even watching when the balloons fell like at the end when he, he had that line, it was just like so funny. Oh my, oh my god, goodness. the balloons. So good. <laughs> All right. So we've got so, some more questions for you, and these ones are gonna be a little more specific and a little more goofy. Okay. So so this first one is the quote of my friend Joanna. Oh yeah, some of these were from uh, listeners from our Instagram posts okay. and stuff. So this first one is, the quote of jealousy makes you feel lousy. Where did that come from? Was that written in the script? Was that something that like came about ad-libbing? What the heck? It didn't come from me, to be uh -huh. honest. I think it was in the script or Polly came up with it on the spot. I'm pretty sure it was in the script because that was like one of the staples, I think, of the whole, you know, movie so yeah I, I think that was there for sure it's such a funny line and then like one year later you're like oh well i already said that but it bears repeating <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny like that scene with rosalina sitting there like i'll literally i'll think things in my head like sometimes when i'm just having random conversations with people and lines from that scene will pop oh my in god my <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy, but hey, then it, then it's it's repeating. There's, there's repeating. <laughs> um, but, uh, next question is, what is your biggest irrational fear? Actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not balloons. <laughs> My biggest irrational fear uh, is actually balloons. I was like, he's lying. <laughs> I was like, here comes. I was like, here he's comes the smart. <laughs> it's not balloons. It's not balloons. Um, I think that somebody's that there's an intruder. In oh, dude! Mm -hmm. Me too. Um, oh yeah, like oof. it's crazy. I mean, one time I was I was with my fiance. We were, I think we were at my grandparents' place in the city. They were like in Florida or something, and we were uh, we were sleeping there for a couple nights and. I woke up and I saw the bathroom door like literally like go like this and I jump, I jump. I looked at her and she was like sleeping but then she woke up and I was like the bathroom door's moving and she's like no it's not go back to bed and I said hold on one second I come back and I've got like my guitar and I'm <laughs> going to check on this thing <laughs> like you got two seconds or I'm going to hit you over the head with an acoustic guitar <laughs> my fiance tells this story all the time but it actually <laughs> happened and uh it was nuts so yeah definitely an intruder <laughs> oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> like, but like sometimes when you wake up in the morning you think something's moving but it's just like you know you're still kind of sleeping and it's the the whole like hazy thing that's definitely what happened because no one was there <laughs> oh my god imagine like you you enter someone's house and then you get beat over the head with an acoustic guitar. <laughs> right? That'd be a way to go. That'd be a way to go. I, I don't even know if that would do any damage. That's like the funny thing is like, out of all the things I could have picked up, I picked up a, a guitar. It just came naturally. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I need something to get done. Pick up the guitar. Yeah. But, I feel like my biggest irrational fear is probably spiders. But I also do fear like the intruder thing a lot. Like people coming into my house, like the second I hear a noise, I'm like, I'm gonna die. Go into like fight or flight mode. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to think that my dog is a protector, but he's like a uh, very small chihuahua half, oh, half yeah. chihuahua half. Like, 
I don't know, uh, Yorkie or something like that. Aww. But he, he, Spaniel, that's what he is. He's uh. a Toronto Spaniel mix. Um, <laughs> he'll like scare dogs sometimes when we're walking. He's got like a little bit of like a, I don't know what happened to him before I got him. We'll just say that. <laughs> But it only happens with other dogs outside. Like inside, he's like the chillest dog. Never barks. He loves us. Like he's the best. But he's got like a little bit. So maybe if there's an intruder, he would give them like a little bit of a pounce or something. I don't know. Yeah. He would sound like a big dog. Maybe not look yeah. like it. <laughs> maybe. I mean, he doesn't bark. But when he sees things that he's not used to, he'll, he'll get aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll have he'll he'll have a moment yeah Siobhan what's your irrational fear oh are you waiting to go last Mary yes I am she doesn't mine is, no mine is the most irrational I can guarantee it go ahead Siobhan I was just thinking about Remo my sister's dog oh yeah because like he he's a giant boxer and he would be intimidating if he had the usage of all four of his legs <laughs> yeah, my dog has, what's it? I can never say it. Degenerative myopathy. So, like, his back legs don't work. And so I literally have to, like, carry his ass if he wants to, like, Oh, man. Move. He has a wheelchair and everything, the whole nine yards. What? But he looks really scary. He weighs 100 pounds and looks like a bully breed. And so it's like, okay, don't come near my house. Right. He looks intimidating. Huh? <laughs> maybe, they're scared, maybe they're scared of the wheelchair. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> run him over. <laughs> he, he could run someone over in that wheelchair, I feel oh, like. He could. I would be scared if he was yeah, on the loose. I gotta my, irrational, my irrational fear is, I just talked about this with my therapist today, is phone calls. Oh my god, really? It's oh, that's not, not yeah. good at talking on the phone. Uh, I, can do a, I can do a Zoom meeting. I can do like a FaceTime call. If I have to get on the phone and call someone and it's an important phone call, I freak the fuck out. Hmm. That's a I, that's very relatable, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. I've really experienced that. Exactly. That also explains all the times, Siobhan, that you and I have FaceTimed each other and then just like texted the whole time and not looked at each other. <laughs> like scrolled through our phones, but been on FaceTime and been like, yeah, this is fine. Yeah. The only person I like call on the phone is my sister. It, it's just Natalie because like you're scared, you of, you're scared of Natalie. <laughs> I'm, I'm a very scary person. This is very there scary. Times when I've been scared of you, dude. There have been times. I love it. All right, Mary. All right, brace yourselves. Okay, so my assistant at work keeps a running list of my fears because they're ridiculous. But number one on this list is pumpkin seeds. What a weenie. I know. <laughs> it's like Bobby Love and balloons. I know. <laughs> the sight of pumpkin seeds gives me the shivers. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's the, it's the texture. I, not even. I, like, I think it was the smell that got me when I was a kid, like, of like carving a pumpkin and like scooping out all the schlep. And now... <laughs> the schlep. The schlep. And now I can't, I can't, I can't go near pumpkin carving. I have to like make someone else scoop out the seeds for me and then I'm okay with the pumpkin carving. Oh my really? god. It's so yeah. Nice. But you don't know like if something happened? I don't know if something happened. It's just something about the texture. It just weirds me out. I just don't like how it's squishy but also the seeds are hard and I don't know. My brain is just fucked man. It's so funny <laughs> because I actually that reminded me of another irrational fear that I have is chewing gum. And I, oh. I don't like, like, when my fiance chews gum, it grosses me out. Like, I don't like it. So she stopped chewing gum and moved to Listerine because I just, I don't find it attractive. The chewing gum, I, I don't know what it is. It's weird. But I, I remember, I look back now, there was an experience I had at summer camp. Where someone got gum stuck in my hair. Oh. I had long hair as a kid. And, and it was, it was a hassle to get out. I had to go to the infirmary. And then I remember being on the bus and seeing gum under the seat. And I was like, ah. So I can relate to, to you a little bit with that. And 
I, I, I think it has to do with that situation for me. Oh my god! Somewhere in my childhood, I blocked it out. Apparently, but you, something. You, they, a therapist has got to. <laughs> a therapist is going to bring that out of me. <laughs> bring out the pumpkin seed. <laughs> please don't. Please keep the seeds in the pumpkin. Thank you. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. Harry, nope. I am not going to keep no seeds in a pumpkin if I meet you in person. <laughs> No. She's gonna dump all the seeds. <laughs> Amazing. Yes, absolutely. Oh, Can't yeah. do it. Oh. All right. So we talked about our rational fears. Um, Kelly, can you still do Bobby's voices? L.A. Surfer Dude and the English accent. I'm Bobby, and I love you. Hello, love. Oh. I'm Bobby. Bobby Love loves you. Does that bring back memories for you? Yeah. Do you hear that sound? That's yes. the sound of our childhoods. This is, this is complete. <laughs> and the surfer voice was like, kind of like in here, dude. It was kind of like, like that, bro. I'm living for this. I'm living for this. I'm trying to think of a surfer line that I had. I can't remember. Dude, don't surf today, man. Uh, gonna write me a new hit. <laughs> Another Bobby Love original. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, don't surf me, bro. So good. That whole scene is so funny when like he's when Matt and Alex are hiding in the bathroom. <laughs> so what? Was, god, was, Matt and Alex were so little back then. They're, they were so little. So small. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that scene was, I think, the first scene that I shot, and I started it, my voice was kind of normal, and then I think it was like halfway through that I started changing it to the surfer voice, and then we just like went from there, but it didn't, it, it wasn't some, I guess I had thought about it subconsciously, but I didn't do it right away and then something clicked and then the surfer voice just happened because there was a huge dichotomy between the surfer and the, and the English. So I wanted it to be like completely different. I think Polly, uh, Polly was pushing it in that direction. So, uh, so yeah, like that's, that's how it kind of came about. Wow. Yeah. It's so wild that like, you know, the band was called the LA surfers and like you were an LA surfer dude, but like your fake persona was like, this British dude, and like the LA Surfers version of LA, that's a Sex Pistols song. That's a Sex Pistols song. Every every time I watch that episode, I'm like, yeah, that's Anarchy in the UK, but like the NBB version. <laughs> totally, totally, hundred percent. Like it's the voice, especially. Oh yeah, I remember that was a note from Michael. We before I even shot it, I went in to do a recording of the LA. I lie, I lie, I lie, I lie. And that also didn't come out until like halfway through the session because originally it was just like regular LA LA. Because I had listened, they had given me the other track to listen to. And I was like, oh, so they want me to do it, I guess, like this. But then he was like, no, no, like we hired you because you're you're like fucking sorry for cursing you're like, <gasps> you, you can curse on the never <laughs> apologize <laughs> never. like you're you're like the billy joe you're the badass you're the and then came out the ally 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 and it was like the the rest of the the session the character was kind of the character was born in the audition but it just developed through the whole process yeah that's awesome. Let me see. Um, I mean, yeah, we could segue. Yeah, one of our fans asked when you're going to do an official recording of the LA cover. It's like, there was one recorded, just not released. We just want it. We just need a oh. full version. <laughs> well, there was a, a, a full version of, I think I have it, um, the LA, like, the one that I sang on the show, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like it. we only got the one snippet of it actually in the show and like the dialogues over it. There was never like a released version of it, you know. 
Oh, oh, I see what's happening here. <laughs> Kelly, it's time. It's time to put that shit on Spotify. It's time to get sued by Nickelodeon. It's time to get sued, sued by Polly Draper herself. <laughs> I'm waiting hey, for her to get sued by Viacom. Honestly. Listening. I had nothing to do with this. I'm just doing what the fans want, you know? <laughs> they want more Naked Brothers. They want the LA surfers. Right, we'll give it to them. Yes. You know what else I wish there was more of? So I read the click novels as a child. Oh, oh we all we did. We knew this was coming. You knew this was coming. Oh, my God. Love that movie. Ridiculous. Over the top. Love it, though. It's everything. It's everything. <laughs> well, and, like, I didn't even realize, I didn't realize that Bobby Love and Chris Abley were the same person. I didn't realize, I you know, it was the same actor until, like, a month ago. And, I like, know. we were talking about, like, oh, we should reach out to Kelly Price and see if he would want to, you know, talk to us about Battle of the Bands. And then when it happened, Siobhan was like, we're going to interview Chris Abley. And I was like, Wait, we're doing what? And then it clicked, and I was like, <laughs> I'm stupid. It's weird. You're not the first one that has said that. And I think it's the orange hair and the it mullet. Was, it, was a, it, it was a completely different look. Totally. It was a completely different look. And now that I think about it, um, another role that I just played is Bobby Love. It, it's, I mean, you have to see a photo of this. It's exactly Bobby Love. Exactly Bobby Love, except he has really big beard but he has the eyeliner he has the hair it's it's bobby i have to send you guys a picture i wish you could yes. watch yeah Just, thing, but it's hilarious we'll keep it to ourselves <laughs> well, I'll, I'll add it send it to my email i'll add it in post <laughs> yeah oh but i'll get back so you were asking me about about chris abley the click <laughs> yes I, I i just wanted to mention that like i love that movie love loved those books i wish that we could have gotten more click movie content because there were so many books there were There's so many books, books. and so many of those books yeah i i we'll, we'll see i'm not gonna say anything yet i'm not gonna say anything i'm not gonna say that's anything. okay i'm just i'm not gonna say anything but hey if there's uh something more there hey that's all i can say but just, uh, maybe, 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 I don't know. Maybe. I'm just going to lose my mind over here. <laughs> I'm also losing my mind, but you played that role so freaking well, because obviously I grew up on the click books, like, and, um, and if I ever had a picture in my head of Chris Abley, it was you, for sure. <laughs> like, like you nailed it. Seriously. Thank you. That's so uh, nice. Thank you. All right. And we're back with part two of the Battle of the Bands special. So I did the recap for this one. I wrote it out. So let me pull up my notes app and I'm going to read you the synopsis. For this fucking episode. Our story picks up with Cooper representing the band in an intense press conference. Thomas and David have a riveting conversation about canceling women. Meanwhile, Sonny wants to take this as an opportunity to plug his polka duo, the Honey Bunnies, so Cooper convinces Miss Scoggins to let them open for the Battle of the Bands. Alex teaches Cooper to ballroom dance and spills the tea about Bobby while Nat mopes by the window. Meanwhile, Bobby attempts to write a song of his own but can't decide between 12-bar blues, between a 12-bar blues owed to his hair or his feet. The Honey Bunnies do a sound check in front of Cooper and Miss Scoggins, and of course, it's tragic. Meanwhile, the Naked Brothers are rehearsing in the green room, but they can't stop roasting Bobby Love. Rosalina takes it personally and quits the whole dang band. Nat runs after her, but it's too late. She ran into Bobby's arms. He says that Lousy is in the wood jealousy again, and when Rosalina calls him out, he says, Bez repeating. Rosalina starts thinking that Bobby is sus, especially when he says that he's from Hogwarts. But anyway, Bobby takes Rosalina's music and throws it away. He tries kissing her, but she pulls away and then walks away. He then takes the music out of the garbage because Bobby loves a big fat phony liar. Meanwhile, the Battle of the Bands is about to start, and of course, Matt Pinfield is commentating about the scene. Commentating on the scene. Some little kid tries to give Bobby a red balloon, but Bobby panics and has security push her away. She ends up giving the balloon to Alex. Backstage, Bobby flexes about stealing Rosalina away, and Nat gets angry like always and rage headbutts Bobby because, of course, this 85-pound 11-year-old can take down a 17-year-old that's twice his height. 
The Honey Bunnies get booed off the stage, shocker, but they get a record deal from Europe, so dope. The LA Surfers take the stage, and uh-oh, they start singing NBB's song. Panic ensues, and Rosalina runs to the band and tells them that Bobby stole her music. Miss Scoggins has a brilliant idea, though. Nat and Rosalina find a pulley rope with balloons loaded up on the ceiling. They pull it, and Bobby has a meltdown as the balloons surround the LA Surfers. Miss Scoggins plays NBB's documentary footage on the big screen, thus exposing Bobby Love because he's a big fat phony liar. Nat teaches Rosalina to play Girl of My Dreams, and then they perform it on stage. The end. The end. But hitch. I'm vibing. So we need to right. talk about this press conference. I would just like to start off by saying that Cooper's headgear cleared my acne. I just love Cooper. Anyway. I would like it's to say just, that Cooper cleared my acne. Just in general, actually. <laughs> Also, does he have braces at any point ever, or does he just have headgear? I don't actually know. Maybe it's just a headgear exclusive. So we do an exclusive on the Honey Bunnies. I love when she- Okay, can we talk about fucking first things we need to talk about here? This is like a YouTuber apology. Right it's awful. Thank you, no further questions. The Naked Brothers Band would like to publicly apologize to the LA Surfers. I didn't hear the LA Surfers yeah. apologize. Did you, Thomas? I don't know, Thomas. Did you, David? I don't know, David. Did you, Kasim? I don't know, David. Did you? <laughs> did you, did you, Alex? Oh my God. I don't know. Did you, Mary? I don't fucking know. I don't know, you, Rosalina? No, I didn't nap because the LA Surfers had nothing to apologize for. Uh yeah pretty much so yeah and then we cancel women they just liked girls more back then the oh world my god for girls rule the boys girl until now this line gives me an ulcer i hate it so much <laughs> this is the second time that we have to apologize for thomas Batuello in this episode yep first was the recorder which is unforgivable but this <laughs> This there's no turning back now so uh yeah thomas and david cancel <clears throat> women because women suck and we hate them right right guys yeah Shabar. sorry i'm just my brain is fucking going crazy you're playing like the you're, i'm imagining your brain is playing the dial-up internet sound <laughs> yeah it's very it's very very true um so yeah what's after the press conference anyone um we why can't the honey bunnies why can't the honey bunnies fuck i don't know how to talk about this scene by other anything other than saying that it's all a mess anyway why not let one of us in the family be happy <laughs> it's all a mess anyway why can't the honey bunnies why can't the honey bunnies so yeah um Cooper comes to Miss Goggin's office and is all like, so can the Honey Bunnies, like, open for the Battle of the Bands? And she's like, uh, I guess. I guess. Sure. Oh, and <laughs> she's like, you should be ashamed for not being there with your band yesterday. My headgear never interfered with my work. <laughs> I know who you are. Please sit down, Mr. Pillot. <laughs> she is so, she's gold. She's so good. She's this so good. Goals. I know who you are. Please sit down, Mr. Pillot. We'll do an exclusive. I'm premiering the Honey Bunnies. I love how she just like does a thing to research the Honey Bunnies. Well, I mean, if Cooper Pillot told me something, I would believe him. Yeah, she just takes his word for it, as would any person. I just, I love the idea of two little fucking like 11 year olds who are so into business mm -hmm. that they just like. I just love everything about the idea of Cooper and Mrs. Goggins are just being like yeah. so fucking busy at that age. Being like, my headgear never interfered with my work. And then the Honey Bunnies, like, do their sound check in front of Miss Goggins and Cooper. And then she was like, those are the Honey Bunnies? They're so old. Europe's a very old continent. Mm-hmm. And when Cooper- Earplugs? Would you like some earplugs? <laughs> Why, yes. Yes, I would. And when Cooper spills his orange soda- all Through the fucking headgear. Through the fucking headgear. I just I wonder it. if that was- scripted or he actually like gave it a try <laughs> dribbled it out of his mouth I, I actually lost it it's so fucking funny okay but but before the soda even happens we get this footage of alex teaching cooper how to ballroom dance 
and Nat is just like sulking in the background. And oh, like, yeah, let's not gloss over that. This is the three of us hanging out. Like Siobhan and Mary are fucking ballroom dancing, and I'm crying in the corner. Like, <laughs> it's, true. it's very true. <laughs> it's like, what are we gonna do about her? Yeah. Like, but why does Alex know how to ballroom dance? And what are they learning for again? Oh, you never know when you're gonna need it. And they're like not even dancing ballroom dancing. They're just kind of like hugging each other and swaying, which is like bro moment, you know? Right. And Alex is wearing a whole skirt. Yeah, because gender is fickle and stupid. Fashion has no gender. So yeah, because he's like, well, you never know when you're gonna need it. But Cooper does end up needing it, so there you go. You're you do. thank you, Alex. Oh my god, and I can't believe we almost glossed over this too. After the ballroom dancing is the fucking feet song and the hair song. We didn't get to that yet. I'm still I'm still hung up on a couple things. Tell me them. I'm still hung up on a couple of things. Namely being, you know, how Cooper is all like, oh, well, we I can't believe he would reveal all of his secrets in the span of this this long of a period of time. And then Alex is like, that's also before we learned the balloon thing. And Nat in the corner after Cooper's like, what a weenie. Nat is just like, I know, right? Breaks his silence to say that. I know, right? I know, right? Cut to the 12 bar blues. Wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. Which, my, my next bullet point was who wrote the hair song and we find that out we in our interview out. portion the hair song. It was so i don't even need to say anything about it we found that out you're welcome guys i love the way that he like put it when we ask him this i mean obviously you guys will like see and hear this but when he's like yeah they asked me to write a couple songs they asked me to like show them my portfolio that's not what he said <laughs> <laughs> i brought my band that's how i would put it put it put it in my 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 cv and be like this is my list of works feet song Oh nine <laughs> duration thirty seconds. Like put it in your um uh 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 what's the thing, Nat? That um fuck. What is? I don't know how to help you right uh, now. <laughs> digital thing that I changed in your dream. What's it called? Oh my press kit. Your press. Kit. Which I I had a dream that Siobhan hacked my press kit for my <laughs> contemporary music. What and a bitch. That she changed my genre to new metal and that she changed all of my like links to like music and videos and stuff to just um links to YouTube poops. Like That's really traumatic. poorly edited YouTube videos and like like my brain just conjured that like this is a, a real fear let's think about this it's at night like, this would happen <laughs> so siobhan doesn't know the password to get into my sonic bids account that's oh, good i will she learn will it bitch know. i will fucking learn it and change your sean for a new metal <laughs> new metal <laughs> yeah because that's me guys that's like yep yep yeah. that's me so, yeah the la surfers are all like dude we can't sing a song about your hair and Pork's all like, you guys, these are magnets. <laughs> Just like fucking with some elder shit in the other room. Like, these are magnets. <laughs> You're not, You're the, not boss. the boss of the feet song. You're not the boss of the hair song, Rita. I love <laughs> I really wish we would have gotten like more of the LA surfers because they're so funny. Well, wasn't there an extended version of this scene, Mary, that you found somewhere? Yeah, the DVD version and the um, digital version are different. The digital version is longer because I remember, um, so the digital series is exactly how it aired on Nickelodeon for the first time. The DVD is like what's cut and like whatever. Because I remember seeing the full scene of the LA surfers when I was a little kid. And then um, saying that, and then I realized that the digital, I mean, uh, the DVD is just shorter um, because the digital series had the extended version when, you know, Rita has actual dialogue and in the DVD, she doesn't say anything at all. So yeah, she like roasts him about the uh, song he's, and then that's when she's like, don't do it, baby. And she like makes out with the guitar player. Of course. But yeah, I feel like I, I would have loved some more like truly like, what's the word I'm thinking of? Authentic Bobby Love material of just, like, yeah. him being a fucking asshole and just, like... And the other band members being just idiots along with them. Yeah, it's 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 delicious banter. Yeah, and he was, like, all, like, yeah, my songwriter, like, quit, so... Yeah, so I gotta, I gotta write another Bobby Love original. Can you believe it? I told him he was fired and he quit. Yeah, <laughs> believe it. Idiots. 
So uh, <laughs> business owners song. during COVID be like, Bobby Love is a himbo. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And so then. Cool. So yeah, he starts singing the feet song, and then he's like, and then the guitar player's like, we're not singing about your foot either. And then You're not the boss of the feet song. Either. <laughs> and then Pork's like, I don't know, the feet song's kind of growing on me. It's kind of, kind of growing on me. I love that the, um, I think it's the drummer, yeah, the drummer is Kelly's cousin. Yeah, yeah. I, love that. I love that fun fact. <laughs> yeah, we love a fun fact. Yes. Really sad fact. <laughs> and then after this is when we finally get to the Honey Bunnies, um, sound check oh with the earplugs and the orange soda bottle and the europe's a very old continent yeah so here's my question so the colonization for me is the actress who plays betty a musician in real life i want to know because i, I feel know. like like it's it's kind of a thing that like the best person to play a like role that's like really shitty at music is to get someone that's good at music so they know how to be shitty um so it makes me Dude. wonder if she has some skill that we don't know about mm. maybe Nat, do you remember uh in the movie rv mm -hmm. how, um, jojo in that movie she sings like terribly on purpose and she's good at singing terribly mm -hmm. but she's like a fucking amazing singer for what? yeah that's what i'm saying yeah that's RV what is i'm saying the only reason I watched RV is because I had a crush on Jojo and I had no idea what the feelings were. I was like, I don't know. I just want to like hang out with her, I guess. Why and do I, was, I have to pee when Jojo comes on screen? Why, why do I have to pee when I watch Aquamarine? <laughs> Get out right now. So, yeah. You and me. Dude, Nat and I were obsessed with JoJo when we were younger. Like, actually, I used to sit in my room in the dark and listen to uh, Exceptional and just cry because I was getting bullied. I, I could cry for JoJo. Like that whole thing with like her record company being like, "Your songs aren't yours," <laughs> and then she had to like re-record all of her songs like two years ago. Mm -hmm. Rude. You know, it's just a little too late. Yeah. Yeah. So after the, the sound check is we get NBB is practicing, but um, Alex is playing like a magazine or a seat cushion and David is playing a kazoo and Kasim is nowhere to be found. <laughs> yeah, where's Kasim in the scene? <laughs> and Bobby Love is a big fat phony liar. Yeah, so they're like running LA and then Nat can't stop singing, Bobby Love is a big fat phony liar. Because he's like, right. Well. Um, but then Rosalina's all like, what the fuck, stop it. And then <laughs> what Cooper's the fuck, like, you guys? And then Cooper's like, yeah, rehearse the song. Like, that like would apply to any other situation except Bobby Love. She says, I can't believe you guys are ganging up on me just because I don't hate someone you hate. Shout out to a certain person who used to be a close friend of mine and literally would pick on me for not hating someone that they hated. Toxic. And turned out to be be as big of a phony as Bobby Love and tried Bobby to cancel me. Bobby Love's big the phony liar. But ended up being a rapist. <gasps> yeah. Like, that particular line, like, when I watched NBB very recently, like, when I first got out of the hospital and, like, rewatched all of NBB, that particular line, like, stuck with me so hard. Like, oh, just because I don't hate someone you hate. Mm. Yeah, that's, it's ma the manipulation for me, baby. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it doesn't apply in the situation of Bobby Love because he's a big fat phony liar, but... But Rosalina also, gets mad and quits the band anyway. She wanted to quit the band because... Clearly. She won't do it. Do it. She can't do it, folks. You are Payman, one of the eight kings of hell. <laughs> Is she, you know... Happiness in Studio City. Is she, like... You know... <laughs> But no, the, how about the whole thing of like Rosalina won't watch the fucking tape of Bobby Love because she won't watch a tape obtained through spying. That's literally like the first thing. Did you write the horny bunnies? I <laughs> it says honey. Show the Why note. not the horny bunnies? Why not oh, the horny bunnies? Oh, 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 it says honey bunnies with a U like Winnie the Pooh, but it looks like honey. Is that my 
Oh. And I saw you like holding it back here and it was like the horny bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's a big mess anyway, so why not the horny bunnies? <laughs> Welcome to Rodeo Disney, everybody. Why can't the horny buddies? Like, the first thing that I would believe is video evidence of somebody lying. Why the Bobby f- live original? Why the fuck would it matter if it was video evidence or not? Denial, Ever. denial, denial. Rosalina. Because Come we're on. Rosalina and we're insecure. Bad Holy repeating. Bobby. Yeah, so she quits and runs right into Bobby's arms, and he's all like, I'm from Hogwarts, and jealousy is lousy, and... Baz repeating. Baz repeating. (laughs) Do you guys think, okay, maybe this is just me getting too deep on a Sunday night, but do you think that there's, like, an aspect of Rosalina that's in denial about the lies that Bobby's telling because she just, like, really wants there to be a person near her that's up front with her and actually like says truth Ooh. like think about you know like the th- theme of like you know feeling ganged up on and being the only girl in the band and like the way that they sidestep her and like just try to always talk about the nat thing and like and Bobby validates her and her experiences and lifts her up and is like, you're so talented and blah, 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 blah. Jesus Christ, stop being right. Like, actually stop being right, you guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Rosalina's um, issues coming into play here. Totally. So that's that on that. Yeah, and then he tries to kiss her, which... <laughs> Why did she turn away? I she guess... said she wasn't ready. Yeah. Also, oh, here's the weird. Here's the weirdness about Bobby Love. How old was he supposed to be? Like actually. So Bobby Love is from Hogwarts, and how old is Bobby Love? Didn't you say seventeen? I'd like to think so. He is seventeen. He was seventeen when he filmed it. Kelly was because he was born in nineteen ninety. And I'm good at just like knowing shit. I'm just yeah. I'm just assuming that's how old the character was supposed to be. The fact makes that he's sense a year, to me. A year younger than Elaine fucks with my brain that's our cousin like we so at? we're still at the bobby love and he's like just throw your music away and move on and it's like that is <laughs> never the answer because like like rosalina should have knew that that was the moment that it was like something's fucky because like something's fucky wacky like even if you're quitting the band like think about how much money you could get to sell like an NBB chart, you know, it's like the money us. I would spend. Yeah, us guys. Well, I personally don't need it because I have a bachelor's degree. Right, 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 right. And I like. You wouldn't buy a sheet music from them. Yeah, oh, you I would just buy pick, it. Pick that all out by ear. I was about to say, Nat. I would buy it. There you go. I would buy it. So yeah, um, of course, Rosalina, he like tries to kiss her and then she's all like, I'm really confused. I'm gonna like go, I don't consent. And so she walks away. And then that's when he uh, takes the opportunity to get the binder out of the trash. So cool. (laughs) And I have another bullet point here that said, was Kelly's hair real or was it a wig? And that was also answered in our interview. So that's answered. I love it. I'm crossing him off the list, guys. That was answered. That was totally answered. So, oh my god, this next scene where it's, like, Nat and Alex are just sitting on the pink couch in, like, the backstage area of this, like, venue, and they're just, like, they look like, it's, like, the worst thing in the world has just happened to them. They are so upset. This is me and Siobhan. Just, like, sitting next to each other, just being, like... Haven't we, like, fucking been in this exact spot before, though, Nat? A thousand times, yes. We're just mourning on the pink couch. Truly, though. Truly. Yeah, and then in walks uh, Sunny and- The Benny horny and bunnies. The horny bunnies, and they're all like, look at our costumes. They're wearing lederhosen with bunny ears. Yeah. So with fedoras. very cute, honestly. I don't Yeah. Know. I would pull that shit with the Zaylon for sure. 
Me and Lee have matching cowboy hats, and I think that's the closest we're ever going to get. Oh, Zaylon and I match all the time. It's really disgusting. We have matching underwear, but you guys, are, you can't exactly see that one. I like leave the house. True. Meundies.com, everybody. Yeah, not sponsored. Dennis, but... not sponsored. <sighs> We'd love to see it. So, okay, here's my next question, okay? Mm-hmm. Why the fuck would a balloon be scary? I don't know. The popping. You think so? The popping is startling. Something happened in his childhood for sure. I mean, why is pumpkin seeds scary? Because it triggers my trypophobia. I wasn't going to get all into that with Kelly because then he'd be like, wow, an actual crazy person. But it like definitely triggers my trypophobia. I have a, I have a crazy fear of small little holes. That's valid. Completely. Interesting. Yeah. Well, this was also the part of the interview with Kelly when my dog shit on the floor and I had to stand up and deal with that while you guys were talking about your irrational fears. And I was like, my irrational fear is when my dog poops on the floor. During the During an interview. interview of your life. Yes. During the most important interview that I'll ever have. True. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, Bobby's afraid of balloons. But anyway, so yeah, they cut to cut to the uh, the Battle of the Bands, and Matt Pinfield is all like, "All right, East Coast versus the West Coast," and then little girl is all like, "Here, Bobby, I got you a balloon. Get that kid away from me." So wild. And then Alex walks up, and <laughs> with the way when she's like, "Here, Alex, I got you this balloon. I hope your band kicks Bobby's band's butts." And then Alex goes, thank you, and pats her on the head. (laughs) Love how just, like, Bobby Love, just, like, being a dick to this child just made her flip. Just, like, I suddenly support the Naked Brothers. Did a full 180. Crazy. Yeah. As she should. And then Alex comes up and and he's like, I wanted an interview with Nat, but you get me, (laughs) Baldy. Top patootie, you got me, Baldy. I love it. I Gross love it. him. Drag his bald ass. Yep. And I love, there's a scene where um, it's like the LA surfers backstage before they go out and play LA. And one of them is like, this song looks cool. And it's like, okay, so you guys didn't practice it. <laughs> so like, right? they're going to just play it. They're, they're going to like walk on stage with the charts and sight read like bullshit. I call bullshit on that one. <laughs> imagine the drummer trying to keep up with the sight reading. <laughs> Can you imagine the Sex Pistols showing up with a lead sheet? Like, that's not happening. <laughs> Never ever. Not ever. Yeah. Gotta prop, gotta prop your, gotta prop your sheet, gotta yeah, prop your charts next to your pedal boards on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there. Fuck. Okay, and now here's another question. Do you think that Michael Wolf can actually yodel? Um... Probably. Why not? Why not? Sure. Let's give him that. <laughs> <laughs> he can he do gets, it all. He, he might gets as well yodeling do it all as well. He gets it. And we're not going to apologize for his yodeling. We will, however, have to apologize for Thomas and his recorder playing mm-hmm. and his canceling of women. Yeah. So I love that the honey bunnies, the horny, the horny bornies, come on stage and they play <laughs> one, one fucking song, and they're like, "All right, great set." Bye, guys. <laughs> As the crowd is like, boo, bitch. One song. And then poor Miss Goggins is like, ladies and gentlemen, please settle down. And when the little kid, he's like, I quit music because of how fucking bad the horny bunnies are. It's so sad. And then she's like, wait, I'll get you a tuba. <laughs> poor girl. Just music like- sucks. I quit. I mean, like, same. <laughs> That's how I would feel. But yeah, so the LA surfers come out and they start playing LA, of course. In their... Sunshine, happiness <laughs> in Studio City. I hate it. I want like just the vocal stems from that recording session so I can make like a trap remix. Just like really throw the genre out the window. <laughs> Time to favorite place is going too fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just going. But they 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 start in on the song and Rosalina hears it and she just like 
Oh no. Runs over oh, no. to the band oh, no. and Nat hugs her. It is so cute. And I die. And everyone's like, you're a bitch. And Nat is like defending her. And it's cute. It's like, no, you're not. No, you're not. Yes, she is. I don't know why this part just like always gets me. I mean, like, because just, the first person she runs to is Nat. It's like just the. The way that there's, there's like, no compassion from the others about her, like, being in the dark about the situation. Like, she wasn't actively trying to be a dick, you know? She was being manipulated. And, like... Yeah, pretty much. Nat actually takes that at face value and accepts that. And the others are, like, you're canceled. And it's, like... Yeah, it's because the others are, like, girls before hoes. And it's just, it's fucking wild. Because all the guys are, like... No, she is stupid. She is stupid. And I'm like, you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I mean, maybe this was like what Rosalina was like looking for as per my like previous synthesis of like, this is where she actually gets the emotional support that she was needing. But it was like, she needed to go through all of the other fucking trials and tribulations of Bobby love before mm -hmm. she could like get her support from that. Maybe. Who knows? Perhaps. But dang. Perchance. <laughs> perchance. The photo of the cow from Barnyard that just says perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and then um so they're playing this song and they're like, what the fuck? And then Rosalina's like, I wish those balloons were made of concrete so they'd fall on Bobby's head. And then they're like, we'll just use them. <laughs> they're like, wait, he's afraid of balloons. What a weenie. Because while yeah, Miss is Goggins is and Cooper screaming. Yeah. And they pop a little DVD in, and they show it up on the big screen of um, Nat, <laughs> of the Naked the Brothers original band. original footage of them playing L.A. L.A. As the balloons fall, Bobby panics. The balloons then, are taking ooh, over! Taking over! <laughs> and then Matt Pinfield comes back in with the receipts and exposes Bobby Love's hoe ass. Pork, I'm not playing games. <laughs> Oh, I'm not playing oh, games. Over They're taking over. So yeah, and then um, and then meanwhile, oh, and, uh, then Nat teaches Rosalina a primary chord progression so that she could play um, "Girl of My Dreams." Yeah, another thing where I'm like, how does she not know that he has peepees for her? Yeah, like honestly, things, a song. I'm in love with a girl, girl of my dreams. I wrote this for a very special person. I was in a lot of pain when I wrote it. You don't realize that that's about you, Rosie? Apparently not. So yes. they play the song, and it's really cute. They share a microphone during the... Oh my god, and when they come out on stage, Nat is like, the LA Surfers did a great cover of her song, LA. The shade of it all! <laughs> Oh, but wait, Miss Goggins was so cute here because she was all like, ladies and gentlemen, please settle down. And then she's like, the Naked Brothers man, where are you? Nat, where are you? And then he comes up and then she hugs him. And it's like, thank goodness. Mm. And when he's like, when I wrote the song, I was sad and now I'm happy. So this is the first time I can play it and enjoy it. Like, that is so relatable of like every song I've written during a depressive episode. And then a week later, I'm like, hey. <laughs> This hey is guys, okay. my new song. This is my new. This is the new new. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Girl, my dream slaps. Open up this pit, but actually don't. Um, this is one of those like uh, hold up your lighters type songs. So. Yeah. Yeah. Also, here's my question: in the the like bridge section, who do you think was the high harmony and who was the low harmony? Matt. Yeah. No, both. but I mean, like... <laughs> Nat was both. <laughs> Guys, you don't get what I'm saying. Oh, Which one do you like, think fictionally? Rosalina sang? Yes. I don't know, man. Because in my brain, she hanged the low one. <laughs> Me too. Uh, 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 oh. Make it count, uh, uh, but it's uh, uh, oh. God, nothing... <laughs> nothing in my life will ever... <laughs> The amount of yeah. serotonin. I saw Big Time Rush live twice, and both times they played the theme song was always the last song. 
but just imagine like so they they leave people start get, getting up and leaving and then all of a sudden they come back out on stage and then all of a sudden you hear uh 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 oh i mean the energy is unreal. and then everyone's panties just slam to the floor it's true. and <laughs> it's true. i just love <laughs> big time rush so much we all do i really do so yeah that's the like the end of the episode and then of course um Cute. As always, the end credits is Girl My Dreams, the uh, demo version with Nat singing in cursive, because of course. I'm in love with the girl. girl. One of my top, top, top NBB songs, like period. It's a great one. It's good. It's really good. So let's move away a little bit from NBB because, you know, we want to give the floor to an act, to a guest, you know, who like took the time out of their day to come on here. So our questions regarding this so like tell us about what's going on i mean obviously maybe during the pandemic but like pre-pandemic like what is your career looking like right now so it seems like you are busy thank you um so right when the pandemic hit uh i had five films to be released in 2021 they're still to be released in 2021 okay and then sorry no i don't know i had four something like that I added two during the pandemic. One that I just shot with Jody Sweeten from Full House and Fuller House. No shit. Oh and, my uh, god. Congrats, dude. Um, uh, I wish I could say more about it. It's a, it's a rom-com and uh, it's super fun and my role is ridiculous and, <laughs> and it's super embarrassing, uh, but it's, it's, it's awesome. She's great. The movie's great. Yeah um and i'm excited about it and then uh and then there was this other movie i did uh during the pandemic as well on race riots which is weird because i was booked on the movie before the race riots actually took place in real life yeah and so we were kind of shooting during all of that which wow. that's, that's crazy. crazy because yeah. my my girlfriend in the movie was black Mm -hmm. So we were an interracial couple, uh, and we had the, a scene in the movie that was like really emotional, and it was extra emotional just because of what was actually happening in the world. So yeah. um, I love that I got to do that because I love doing stuff like that. Um, I I directed a movie that was like kind of like a self help type of thing about you know athletes being discriminated against and it was tied to a family member of mine so i'm all for if i can be in movies or produce movies that have that kind of underlying message then great and sometimes it's just for entertainment which is which is great too yeah no that's mm -hmm. awesome and i have this movie with chris pang from crazy rich asians wow oh. uh, it's an esports movie and what? I it's was thinking about movie. it earlier. My role is also like the bad boy. And a lot of it, I always think about it because I'm not, I, I don't usually consider myself like that kind of character, but I'm like, why is it so easy for me to get into that? And a lot of it I think is because of my early roles like Bobby Love where it was just that. And I just thought of that like right before we got on because that role in Underdogs Rising is exactly a Bobby Love. And, and it's been uh, a few times I, I've, I've had that experience like in my roles today. Uh, and so, yeah, so maybe, uh, maybe Bobby Love did have a bigger impact. And <laughs> I mean, that, I, I didn't talk about this yet, but that, that actual experience of being bringing it back to the Naked Brothers Band one more time. Yeah. My, my uncle was an extra in movies. He came to the set uh, to be an extra for the scene where there were like all those extras and I was on stage doing the ally ally. And I actually saw him in the audience when I was on stage. And then on the lunch break, we walked together down the street in Astoria, Queens. And I'll never forget, we were walking and he's like, I always knew that one day I would be an extra and look up and see you as the, the lead actor. Oh, that's so wow. darling. Well, I love that. And so that, that was, uh, 
like the reason that my career even exists. So thanks to thanks to you, Uncle Lenny. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that was one of our questions coming up. Like, how did the Naked Brothers Band, like, role kind of influence, shape, steer your career? So, like, anything else come to mind when we ask that question? You already pretty much answered it, but if there's anything yeah, else. You can that. <laughs> yeah, that's the biggest thing. And then the other thing is just how uh, roles that I play now are influenced by, you know, a little bit of the energy that Bobby Love had. I just uh, was in this movie, Infamous Six, with Armand Asante, the one I was telling you about earlier, where I played a rocker. And it's still, I had some of that, that energy, too. Um, so it's been quite a few times. And then what's cool is I also have roles, like I just played the lead in this movie called Reboot Camp with David Lipper, with uh, Ed Begley, David Koechner, Pearson Foday, um, Lindsay Shaw, Chaz Bono's in it, Jacques <laughs> in it. It was like a, 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 a very cool, eclectic cast. And, uh, and in that movie, I'm totally like just a nice dude. So to go from that to like a Bobby Love role in my career today is, uh, is a lot of fun. And, and I think it's, again, because of, I had that early experience with that type of role. So. Yeah, awesome. So I personally want to know, tell us about music and producing and directing, things that are, you know, away from the, like being not in front of the camera. I've always loved music um, and I've always loved film. I mean, they're my, two of my favorite things other than my family and my fiance, my dog, uh, my friends, uh, film and music. I mean, they're, and sports. Those three are basically me in a nutshell. I mean, behind this uh, black thing is a basketball hoop. And, you know, when there I'm at my side, I, and I need breaks or I'm even on the phone and sometimes people on meetings with me have no idea, but I'm shooting hoops because it, you know, it's just what I'm used to. I've always done it. And uh, so that that is like an outlet for me. Music started super early on. I mean, my dad used to play Neil Young when I was like very, very little. I remember yeah. being outside on the deck and I would just sing along with him. So that happened when I was like four years old. I mean, I was introduced to like classic artists like Neil Young and Steely Dan. And um, our dad <laughs> raised us on Steely Dan. Uh, yeah. Captain, uh, you know, The Who. Um, Crosby, Stills, Nash, all those guys. So, uh, so music was always has always been in my bones, and uh, yeah, and I and quickly started singing, playing guitar. We had drums in our house. There was a piano, um, keyboard. There was you know everything. I had bands, and um, and I loved music. I still, I mean, love music, and um, and I have some tricks up my sleeve with that too. I mean. I played a lot of musical roles. I was on the series called Side Effects on Awesomeness TV. Mm -hmm. That was musically inclined. Uh, it was a music. It was just a musical series. And uh, and spoiler alert, but uh, there's going to be more of that in my life, in my career. And um, and I've got a little secret too uh, with some other music stuff. So. Uh, yeah, and then as far as, as film goes, I mean, I was always filming shit when I was a kid. I was always thinking about things as a movie. If a song played, oh, this would be a great ending song to a movie, you know, I would just always picture things like, like film. So it just came naturally. And my brother and I would always, uh, we made a Napoleon Dynamite dose, which I don't know why we called it dose, but it was supposed to be like a Napoleon Dynamite. I need to see that now. <laughs> my little brother, played, uh, little brother played Kip. Oh my god. And he was oh my god, I love it. Eight years old playing Kip. Wait, so does this mean that you were Napoleon? Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I love it. I need to see this. Oh, yeah. Well, Nat, you're in there with the side pony. What's her, what's her name? Oh my God, the girl. Oh yeah, the girl. You could, oh, yeah. be, you could be drinking whole milk if you wanted to. <laughs> it's because you think you're fat, because you're not. <laughs> Love that. What's her name, like Trish, Trish, right? Something like that. Right? 
I believe you. Sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll go with it. Sure, why not? Um, yeah, so uh, that just kind of happened naturally. Um, I went into audition for this one short film, ended up getting it. Uh, it was like the photographer that did all the Rolling Stones stuff. So like any Rolling Stones photo that you see, it was this guy, Ken Regan, may he rest in peace. Um, he was honored at the Oscars, I think a few years ago. An incredible person, incredible photographer, incredible producer. And he produced that movie. It was my first thing. And I think right away after that was the Nicky Brothers Band audition, like maybe a month, maybe two months, something like that. Yeah, and that's how it all, that's how it all began. Wow. Yeah. Directing just absolutely fascinates me. It's something I would like to do if I had the resources and money, but like, I, I love, just, I love film direction, like period. Yeah, it, it's awesome. Uh, I never thought that I would uh, direct. And then, uh, you know, a, a very personal family story just kept knocking me on the head saying, you have to do something about this. And I started making it. And, uh, and now it's coming out in February. It's called On Thin Ice. And it's coming out through Freestyle Releasing. They're a great company. And I'm super excited to, to start a partnership with them. Uh, I have another movie coming out with them. That was the first time I directed, first time I produced, and now I continue to produce movies. And I've got a production company. I've got two. Ooh. I've got Ooh. one that produces mostly sports docs and uh, projects that, kind of bring society forward in, in, in some way, just, you know, uh, that kind of thing, just uh, positive uh, pictures. And then I have one that I just started with the senior vice president of distribution at Entertainment Studios Motion Pictures. His name's Scott Hunter Yeager. And we started a company called Wave Motion Pictures and really excited about it. It's uh, a lot of fun and we're producing a lot of uh, films with, uh, some great actors and I'm going to be in the films and uh, it's been it's been a great time so uh, so yeah yeah the music again music and film are, are my lives. Awesome. Oh, that's awesome and good luck to you in these films getting made these films getting released and whatnot hopefully theaters will be back open theaters that do big runs limited runs like please like I, I know that streaming services are kind of the move right now but like I miss going to the theater. <laughs> Yeah, I miss going to the theater too. It's it's Seriously. like part of our childhood, and yeah, for sure. But you know, uh, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon—they're uh, uh, great alternatives right now. iTunes to go into the theater, and obviously, while we would like to be in the theater, um, you know, if it's safer at home, then uh, I hope that there's a safe way to, to keep releasing content like this, like we've been doing during the pandemic and, and, uh, and, you know, people seem to like it and, and it gives opportunities to older movies perhaps that start like a revamping process on Netflix, you know, like the click came back on Netflix and a lot of movies, I think like Poseidon, there was like another movie that I saw Patriot's day that was like number one on Netflix that was released. And that has Alex in it. Alex is in Patriot's Day. That's right. That's right. That's oh right. Oh my gosh. That's and right. he plays Jahar. It's fucking crazy how it's well crazy. he does that. Yeah. Oh that's God. that's another one where you 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 wouldn't know it was him. Like you you have to do like a double take. It's like it's completely different than how he normally like looks and acts. Uh it was a great job to him in that in that movie. Um but yeah, so <laughs> movies that have been released are are coming back and making splashes. So that's why, you know, that's kind of cool, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've been watching, it has been Netflix recently. I, I think the only, like, new, re I, I need to start watching more new releases digitally, like, and not taking that for granted. The only one, the only new release that I've really, like, I watched, um, Natalie, I did end up watching King of Staten Island. It was great. <laughs> My sister's I haven't, a seen, I haven't seen that. Sister, yeah. yeah, she's a Pete Davidson fan. And um, if you're into horror movies, I ended up uh, watching Possessor, which is a recent one. It's fucking amazing. It's got, um, oh my God, what is, what is her name? The girl from Mandy, uh, Sean Bean in it. It's directed by Brandon Cronenberg. Fantastic. Worth the 20 bucks, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. <laughs>
Love it. Check it out. I'll check it out. A, a good horror movie will uh, will bring out my irrational fear. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> That's for sure. All right. I think we have one more question on our list of questions, and that was just, um, were there any other jobs that you had maybe in your younger days or, I mean, even now or more recent years that um, felt formative sort of in the way that you talk about the Naked Brothers Band show being something that kind of started and drove your career to bigger places? Any other roles you'd like to shout out or stuff like that? Are you saying any roles I'd like to shout out, like roles that I've played or, or different jobs that I've had just in life? I say just anything. Anything, anything goes. Things that just felt formative to you. Yeah. Um, I think being a babysitter was really formative uh, because it allowed me to, I know you're laughing, but it's the truth. It allowed me to like, okay, first of all, I think it prepared me to be a father. And second of all, I think it, because the kids aren't paying attention to you no matter so how do you get someone's attention so it was interesting to play with that you know walk that type rope of like fucking li listen dude i mean you're not running around the house paintballing the whole thing here we got work to do and how, how do how do you you know get somebody to focus so yeah, yeah i think that's definitely helped me in my life for for sure um I, funny, funny story, I don't know how, how uh, helpful this has been in my life at all. I, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I remember it, but in high school, actually, I have not know, I'll say this one first, but I, I had to work at Con Ed, it was like in the, the, one of the classes that I was taking in high school, uh, we had to go and work at Con Ed, uh, which is like, um, you know, you put on the blue suit and you go in into this big warehouse and you're like sweeping and there's like a bunch of stuff. I don't even know if I know what they do in there. They do a lot of electrical <laughs> stuff, uh, all kinds of jazz. And I'm in there just like sweeping and the whole thing. I'm in the blue suit and I wish that I had like a photo of, of this, but I wrote a song about it afterwards. And, uh, and I played it at like the high school, uh, I was like some event where I played this song <laughs> and it was called like Con Ed or something. And it was all about my experience sweeping at Con Ed and doing the whole thing. Um, yeah, I, I th it, it's probably helped me in some way of just being like, okay, you know, you're not the shit. You're not, you're, you're not shit. You're sweeping and you're cleaning toilets and stuff. And so bring yourself down to earth. So that's probably done that for me in my life. No, and yeah, that's very important actually. <laughs> It's insanely important. And then the other thing I remember is when I was taking classes at Pepperdine, I was, I had to go to um, uh, like a, a, what's the proper word? It was, it was like a juvenile uh, center where, uh, you know, oh, I God, had to you get scared straight. <laughs> What? Did you get scared straight? Did I get scared? Scared straight. Like the TV show. Oh, I don't know that show. Oh, they like oh, drag what? they like drag kids to like these badass kids to juvie and then the cops just roast them to death. And so they like, crack. Okay. okay. I've never I've never seen it, but now I have to watch it. Yes you do. <laughs> I had to be like a social worker for younger kids that are kind of taking the wrong path. And that was like another thing okay. like babysitting is like focus, you know, how, how to get somebody to do what you want them to do, whether it's their homework or whatever it is, because these kids were like all over the place. My key was playing basketball. Like I realized that a lot of them, I just focused in on what they had like a connection to. A lot of them like basketball. I noticed one of them was wearing Air Jordans. I said, do you like to play? And we got permission. We just went outside and shot hoops. And I learned more about this kid in those five minutes of shooting hoops than I did for the two weeks before that of just like sitting around and him playing his video games while I'm doing his homework for him. So, I mean, uh, that really, I think, probably changed 
I don't want to say his life or anything huge like that, but I think he definitely, like, you, we found that connection. So he was able to kind of move that into his, his schoolwork and, and like, just start to, you know, uh, I guess, uh, put his energy into, into uh, more appropriate places or places where it would help his life a bit more, get him back on, on track. And I loved most of the people that were there. I think they were great kids and, uh, and that was a great experience for me. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I love that. Natalie, that's the, the, the bells that are ringing off in my head about that is like, um, she and I, uh, I don't work there anymore, but we used to work at a, uh, girls rock camp, uh, like for girls who are like, you know, 17 and like between eight and 17. And like, we met a lot of young kids who were on a similar path, but we were not social working so much, but we were teaching them how to play guitar and drums and bass and other instruments. Mm -hmm. It's a very similar, you meet, you meet a lot of different people with a lot of different experiences who are young. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know you guys play instruments. That's, that's all. Yeah. We're all yeah. 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 <laughs> that's, that's part of like, that was very formative to us when we were younger was like, obviously growing up with musician parents, kind of like how you had mentioned, you know, I, I didn't want to speak over you on that. Um, he's like school of rock, you know, so that much kind of stuff. And then like, Naked Brothers Band, like, obviously. I sat there and, <laughs> obviously, like, we would sit there and, I mean, Mary, we did not grow up with Mary, but she can kind of speak the same of, like, you sit there, you grow up, and you see that, and you're like, oh, I want to be a musician, I'm going to go right out and do it. Mm -hmm. These kids can do it, so can I. <laughs> yeah, for sure, and the School of Rock and the Naked Brothers Band were, like, around the same time, right? Yeah, uh, totally. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. I love that movie, too. I love that movie. Siobhan could probably recite the whole script for you right now. <laughs> probably could. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that though. I can't believe that movie. That, that's a musical now. It's like a Broadway musical. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. That's nuts. Yeah. Naked Brothers Band is next on Broadway, guys. Let's do it. <laughs> we're gonna. We're gonna. If it's anyone that's gonna write it, it's us three because we're already on our way. I mean, it does take place, place in New York. Hey, if it does take place in New York. I got the copyright right here. Oh, great. Well, we'll, we'll hit you up. When you, heard we, it, you heard it here first. <laughs> when we finish the book, we'll let you know. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, we haven't been sued by Nickelodeon, Viacom, nor Polly Draper yet, so. You wrote a book? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Uh, no. <laughs> I think she's talking about the Scholastic book, maybe. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, Awesome. Yeah. That's so good. Uh, I think um, that covers most of our, of our questions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I guess, do you have any, like, any other things you want to say about any of the stuff we talked about or any, like, closing remarks you'd like to make to our listeners, anything like that? Yeah, you guys should uh, tune into this show. I think it, you guys are awesome. I love that, you know, this is an all-female show. Uh, and you guys are killing the game. I love the questions. I love your attitudes. I love the energy. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. It's been amazing to have you. Yeah. We hope to do more guest appearances like this in the future. So we'll see what the Let's future is. Be my pleasure. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Great, guys. Thanks so much for having me. This was Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. Yes, thank you, Kelly. Thank Loved you it. so much. All right, guys. Take care. You, you too. too. Bye. Bye. So what did we learn from today's episode, folks? Bobby loves a big fat phone and a liar. Um, I Kelly learned Price that. Is, Kelly Price is too handsome for his own good. That is fucking cool. I also learned he has dimples. I did not notice before didn't notice not in the clip no i did not notice at all no i'm so sorry you didn't take the time to look at his face well you know what i had a i looked at his face for an extended period of time this interview so his dog learned that is, that's great always make sure that your dog poops outside before you interview a famous person on zoom <laughs> always bring your laptop charger home from work so you don't have a mental breakdown five minutes before you're supposed to have this interview with <laughs> And always steal Red Bull from Walmart before you have your Zoom meetings. <laughs> Not kidding. Um, hire your friends to edit your podcasts.
Um, so that you don't end up throwing yourself into a blender. <laughs> don't let your headgear interfere with your work. Don't. Don't. We um, gotta check that shit at the door. You really gotta check that shit at the door. And just, uh, a C7 is very cheeky. A C7 I, is less cheeky than a D flat would have been. I just want to say really quick, since this is like the season finale of the season of NBB and of Unclothed Sisters, um, this has been just like the best experience, honestly. Mm-hmm. Getting to do this like almost every single week, getting to talk about my favorite show with my sister and one of like the coolest people I've met this year like at all getting to have just this super positive experience getting to kind of like form this community around like the re the revamping of this show in our lives like I know I get told hey you talk about this shit all the fucking time Siobhan but like you know it's important to me it's important to like my childhood there's like a reoccurring theme of sobriety with the Naked Brothers band for like my mom and like now for me like the minute that I got home from the fucking hospital back in June, like the first thing that I did was just sat down and watched NBB from start to finish just because it was like the only thing that was going to make me feel better at the time. And it's just like this whole project just means so fucking much to me. And I'm just so happy that we get to do it. And yeah. Ditto. Ditto times three. Mm-hmm. yeah there's nothing stupid about this to me it's like I am very happy to be able to do this and to have a good time and just like <sighs> my favorite fucking show ever I just mm-hmm. it's so much comfort seriously well I think in a world where mm-hmm. like all we do lately is like stare at our screens like having a form of alternative media that isn't about capitalism <laughs> is really nice to yeah. create and cultivate and listen to and find community in and just vibe. Amen. This whole project has been yeah. such a lifeline for me, especially this year. It's just truly has been a wonderful blessing. And I'm just so thankful for the people that we've met throughout all of this. And like, I mean, everything about it has been absolutely fucking fantastic. I hope that we get to do the birthday stream with our friends yes. and some stars and just some good shit happening. I really hope we get to do that. And I'm excited for season two, which I am not, which I'm excited. It's coming up in 2021. Uh, we're going to take a little break for Christmas and such. The holidays get a little nuts, but we will be back uh, full swing in 2021. We're excited. So for the upcoming year to do uh, season two 